So, okay. All right. So with, um, we're at 901, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, there is a uh, link in the chat for tracking attendance. Um, if you have any questions, please do utilize the chat. Um, and uh, I'll drop the link one more time. There we go. Um, cool. All right, let's get started. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping. Make sure to mute your mics. Um, and then during the presentation, any questions, um, just ch chat them in there, put them in the chat. Um, we do have slides where you can um, unmute yourself and ask those questions. So if you're wanting to unmute and ask them, please hold until those designated slides. Um, and then so per current project wait time, we've got application to LOI, three to four weeks, DGPA review, one to two weeks, final documentation review, three weeks, inspections are at two to three weeks right now, and um, the shutdown wait times are still at three months, depending on location. Um, and again, attack, attack, um, sorry, tracking attendance in the meeting pool, um, and we'll, we'll drop it in a couple of times throughout this um, uh, presentation, so just keep a lookout when you're checking out the chat. All right. Um, okay, so our upcoming meetings, so this is our administrative. The next one will be in October, and that's the general. Then we'll have a technical and administrative. Um, these are all going to be on the third Thursday of every month. And um, for the general, it is mandatory for all contractors. Our technical is mandatory for our new contractors and highly recommended for any new technical staff that you have. Um, and then this administrative one is mandatory for new contractors, but recommended for, again, new employees um, at existing solar contractors. All right, um, so we'll start off with a safety moment, um, a hiking safety. So um, this past weekend I went hiking and um, the mosquitoes are out in full force. So just a quick let you know there. Um, but if you are gonna go out hiking, um, just plan your hike, look over a map, reviews, any of those kinds of things. Um, also know your limits if you've never been um, hiking for five hours, maybe don't start with that one. Um, understand yourself, take inventory. How are you feeling? Even just that day, if you're not feeling 100% that day, um, you know, make sure you're you're um, taking that into consideration. Um, know what to bring. If bring water, bring snacks, all the things that you need. First aid kit if you're doing like, you know, all day hikes, maybe. Um, yes. And also SPF, sunscreen, everybody. Um, uh, hiking smart, watch out for animals and insects, and then also just respect the environment, like pick up after yourself, don't take any rocks, all that good stuff. Um, we always want to do mementos, but um, just make sure that you're respecting the environment um, and watch for any signs, things like that. All right, um, so with that, we have a new addition to the team, uh, Ruby. Hi everyone, and uh, it's nice to meet you. I will hopefully be taking over these meetings as I get more acquainted uh, with our programs. Um, I have some experience in solar working for SunPower, um, and I worked at housing nonprofits in Austin um, and New Orleans. Um, I like to run, bike, see live music, swim at Barton, and hang out with my dog, as you can see pictured. Um, but yeah, reach out to me with any you know, questions you might have, and I'm excited to work with all of you. Awesome. Thank you, Ruby, and welcome. Um, all right, so I think Tim um, might be online. We did have a meeting earlier today. So, um, Tim, if you want to talk about standard offer. Yeah. Um, hey, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, we got you. All right. So um, Austin Energy has been holding stakeholder meetings uh, regarding the standard offer. Hopefully you've been attending those. If not, I'll catch you up here. Um, the standard offer is a mechanism through which we intend to increase the um, community solar portfolio. So um, we want to you know, broaden that and add subscription, more subscriptions to our residential customers through the community solar program. Um, in the 
not so distant past, we have went out for RFPs um, to try to um, bring on new projects to that portfolio. And they just weren't successful. The, the proposals that we got were either too high or um, they did not have proper site control or they were just not viable for various reasons. Um, so, and, and we don't like to continually go out for RFPs and that don't result in projects um, because that puts an unnecessary burden on the contracting community. And um, it makes it less likely for us to get good um, proposals when we do do it. So we have developed a alternative approach. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons those projects were not succeeding was because the contractors didn't have visibility into what Austin Energy was willing to pay. Um, so we have solved that problem by creating um, a proposed tariff that will um, provide that benefit directly to a system owner, regardless of whether they are a customer or not. So um, these solar off or solar standard offer systems would be interconnected ahead of the meter. Um, so on the utility side of the meter, and then we would pay the system owner directly for the, the energy generated. So this kind of helps to um, open up a, a new market sector in Austin. Um, you know, for until now, there are many buildings out there where the building owners um, are not the off taking customers from the utility. So if they were to develop a solar project, um, it would be their tenants that benefit from that solar project and not the building owner. So um, a lot of times those projects just don't happen because the only way the building owner could recoup on that investment would be to increase rent. And then that kind of takes them out of the market. Um, so we're hoping that this will help to um, open up that market sector. Um, and a little bit about the rate itself. The rate itself is based on the avoided cost to Austin Energy. So we're basically passing through not only the market price, but um, also the value of other avoided costs like transmission and, and ancillary services for Austin Energy. Um, we are using the same methodology to calculate those avoided costs as we use for the value of solar. Um, so it is equivalent in that regard, except that the solar standard offer does not include societal benefits. So that little extra adder that the value of solar has um, is not incorporated into the, the solar standard offer. Um, so uh, it will adjust as it moves forward. So based on the market, so every once every three years, we will adjust the, the rate uh, based on the average of the previous five years. The next adjustment would be in 20 March of 2026, and then it would continue to adjust every three years moving forward. There's no time limit on it. So it's, you know, with a, a PPA, you might have a 20, 25 year PPA. But this is indefinite as long as the system is producing, we will pay the rate similar to the value of solar. Um, there are some program guidelines um, and, and procedures that we'll be going over in this kickoff meeting, presuming that council approves this rate um, on the 10th of October. Then we intend to have that kickoff meeting on the 15th of October, where we go um, kind of with a fine tooth comb through all of the details um, of the guidelines and requirements of the program and processes therein. Um, so to get you guys going, and that would allow you to then, and, and we'll also um, allow contractors to start submitting um, applications to be a participating contractor for that program. If you're already a participating contractor, you just have to let us know. Um, otherwise, you know, you can become a participating contractor and signal to the community that you are developing standard offer projects. Um, 
starting on the 15th, we will start receiving applications. Once an application has been received and reviewed, we will notify um, the participating contractor who would be building the system for the system owner. Um, and then they can move forward, develop that project. And um, we, starting in February, we will start interconnecting those projects. And then we start paying the uh, provider for the energy. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of details to this. I don't want to spend all day on it. But um, if you are interested, I, I highly encourage you to um, keep a lookout. We'll be sending out an invitation to everyone in this meeting. Um, and we will hopefully be able to launch this on October 15th. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. I see it. Um, I see a hand up. Um, uh, David. Okay, let me unmute you. Um, all right, David, go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm trying to unmute over there. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, we got you. Yes. Good. Just real quick. I'm putting them in the chat too, if it's easier, Tim. Um, so how is this different from net metering? Second question, what happens when legacy customers that are currently in value solar program find out about this? Um, and then also there's a thing that says quarterly checks going out. I know we always say you will not receive a check from Austin Energy. So can we clarify on that, please? Thanks. Yeah, so um, this is not anything like net metering. The interconnection is on the utility side of the meter. So the host customer does not get any kind of a bill benefit. The host customer could potentially get a, and, and would most likely um, be, you know, kind of giving, having a roof lease, if you will, um, or some kind of a hosting agreement. Um, the host customer could also be the owner of the system, um, to be clear. But so, so basically the systems are going in similar to like a feed-in tariff, if you're familiar with that. They're on the utility side of the meter. We are buying the energy that comes off of that at the meter. Um, so does, um, does, did that answer all your questions? David, did that, did that answer all your questions? I'm seeing a thumbs up. All right. Cool. Um, if anyone has any other questions, oh, uh, I see. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so if you have any other questions about standard offer, um, I did put the solar standard offered at austinenergy.com email in the chat. Um, you can also unchat or unmute yourself, um, send in the chat, all the things. Um, we love questions, so please send them on. Um, great. All right, so getting back to solar and austin energy bill credits and incentive programs um okay so um for all solar customers um we talked about the vos this is the monthly on bill credit for generation based on this value of seller uh, solar rate and so um we talked about it a little bit um it's not met net metering so um you'll see this throughout this whole presentation um we're going to reference to the value of solar um again it's not net metering um we have some more in-depth slides later on but also um wanted to touch on the incentives that we have residential commercial and multifamily. these are by application only so if you go through the application phase you will you might be eligible for an incentive, but all um, solar will have a value of solar, um, uh, barring standard offer. <laughs> um, all right, so how does the bill credit work? So again, no net metering in Austin Energy Service Territory. Um, instead, we have value of solar. So this is basically where the customer will be credited 100% of their solar production right off the roof so as soon as it as we see it it's um we're paying for it austin energy now has that energy um similarly the customer will be charged 100 percent of their on-site consumption um so they're getting charged for what they use 
um, you know, turning on lights, all of those things, but then they're also getting credited for 100% of their solar production. Um, and currently the value of solar rates are 9.7 cents per kWh for commercial and uh, residential. If it's larger than one megawatt, then um, it goes to 4.7 cents per kWh. Um, so how does it work with solar bill credits? Um, so participating solar contractors must educate their customers on the VOS. Um, so any sales documentation referencing net metering is like, misleading to our solar customer or to Austin Energy customers. So um, they're verboten. Um, Austin Energy gives you a lot of resources. So um, we've got our website, we have our solar education course and the bill explainer here. Um, all these on our website for everyone to use. If you're having more questions about it, we always have our solar at austinenergy.com where we can give you some more documents if you like. Um, we have um, everyone will get a copy of the um, of these slides that we're looking over today that you're more than welcome to share all of these things um, to help your customers understand the BOS. All right, so for residential solar rebate programs, um, so these are for three um, three kW and above um, multifamily. Uh, the residential and multifamily come from the same bucket, um, and the rebate is 25 for residential, um, and then multifamily 60 cents per watt or 100% for nonprofits. Um, for residential, it's a one time check. For multifamily, it's going to be the system size times the rebate level, um, also a one time check. Um, and so this is paid to the applicant. Um, and the uh, rebate levels are subject to change. All right, so for our commercial incentive program, we have our performance-based incentive, PBI. Um, so we've got medium, large, extra large. And um, this is also, um, or this is gonna be an on-bill credit. So if you have, if your customer goes through a PBI, you'll see two line items on the bill. One is a PBI, one is value of solar. This is for this PBI program is only five years. So you'll see that credit for five years and then it will be rolled off and it is calculated by doing the monthly production times the rebate level. So um, eight, six and four cents per KWH. Mm -hmm. Sorry, y'all. Um, okay, so registration requirements. What do you need to do to become a solar contractor? Well, you're already on the right path because you're in the meeting. So. Thanks for being here. Um, also, registering allows you to participate in like our energy programs and you can sit bid on city projects. Um, this is because you will need to be a vendor with the city. Um, the requirements documents include, you have to sign our um, code of conduct, um, our contractor handbook, have a TDLR electrical contractor license, workers comp, liability, um, and automobile insurance. Um, and then again, we have our general technical and administrative meetings. Um, we do also want to want you to um, sign our FACTA acknowledgement form, and we will get into what FACTA is in a second. Um, so the ongoing contractor requirement. So once you are able to get into the program, we still have some requirements to make sure that you are um, uh, to stay in the program. And so, um, of course, we want to make sure that all of our documents are up to date. All the uh, program documents are up to date. Please be attending our general contractor meeting. Um, we would like to see consistent projects being rebated. Of course, you have to comply with um, uh, our compliance documents um, requirements. And then um, making sure that your employees and resource inboxes are up to date. So if you um, have a new admin, make sure that their email is in our system. Um, if there's someone who leaves, we want to remove those. Um, and then also making sure to comply um, with FACTA. All right, so talked about FACTA a little bit. What is it? Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act. All right, so basically FACTA is a mandate that makes sure that um, when you're looking at customer data that it is uh, private and protected. Um, so please use some security um, measures. And some of these examples include like truncating the credit card numbers, um, li limiting access to customer informa information, um, 
and then creating just an environment where data is safe from prying eyes. Um, so fake FACTA data can include names, social security, phone number, addresses, email addresses, things like that. That is what the data we have. You can see it in our system, but um, we do want to make sure that it is protected. Um, and responsible parties include, so um, uh, responsible parties, Austin OD and its vendors are responsible for FACTA compliance. So that's us and that's you all. Um, we want to make sure that um, we get that FACTA form signed and um, we would like to see a renewed training annual. All right, so any questions on FACTA, please put them in the chat. All right, so slides for questions. Um, let's see. What's going on here? When will the new DIG updates be rolled out? That is a great question. Um, is Megan online? That We had a meeting about this earlier today, so we can get you some exact dates. Um, I can tell you all that we are working on it. Um, Oh, there's Megan. Thank you. So TBD for now, but maybe uh, November. Um, keep a lookout on that. All right. Anyone else? Um, I don't see anyone's raised hands. So I'll go ahead and keep going. All right. Life of a solar project. Oh, uh, sign in link. Yes, I can drop that in the chat. There you go. Um, so there's the sign-in sheet. Remember to sign in. Thanks, everyone. Okay, jumping back in. Life of a solar project. What's the installation process in Austin Energy? All right, so the um, life of a solar project. Basically, if you are um, doing a solar rebate for a residential, you'll have a solar education reference number um, or your customer will have taken the solar ed exam. Um, then we'll need to get a customer agreement form, um, a system layout, and then once we verify that information, you will receive an LOI um, or a confirmation letter. Um, then there is some information from permitting that you'll have to go through, making sure that you get a DGPA. Um, and then for DGPAs or projects, Above 25, we'll need Austin Energy Review. Um, after that, there's installation. Um, so you'll see rough inspections if you need a pre-con meeting um, and then any meter variance approvals. Um, once you're ready to inspect, um, do an inspection on your side, then you'll get, you'll request it through the form. This is a clickable link. It does go to our website. Um, please make sure that you're requesting an inspection through our website. Um, and then just confirm that the meter is paid in full, or sorry, the permit is paid in full. Um, after that, um, if it passes, um, it'll be about five to 10 business days um, after finding passing final inspection um, that the um, makes sure that the system will be energized. Austin Energy doesn't um, issue a PTO. Basically, um, there is an email through Smartsheets that kind of gives you the okay to uh, operate. Um, and then for close out, um, there will just be a QAC with an EECP. Um, and that is the form that the uh, platform we use to issue rebates. Um, and so uh, the VOS will start and um, we will, you know, do our QC and send out the rebate at the end. Of, or if it's um, PBI, the, um, the PBI bills will start. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then just a quick note that the city of Austin DSD owns part of the process. They own the permitting process. So if they, if you have any questions about permitting, please reach out to them. All right. So, excuse me. Um, for commercial projects. Um, yes. Okay. So describing steps the ECP. Um, and all right, so I have a couple more slides that goes into depth on EECP and solar ed. So we can all go through those. And if you still have questions, um, we can go back to them in the chat. Awesome. Thank you. Um, OK, so for commercial projects um, greater than 500 kW, um, you have to fill out an interconnection application. There's also the DGBA. Um, and then there's the completed application form. It's found in the interconnection guide. Um, 
page 82. Um, so, and provide electrical drawings and insurance documentation. So please uh, make sure that you have all of that if your project is um, very large, it's gonna go through an extensive review. All right, so rebate program documents, program guidelines, and the CAS. All right, so we have two forms um, and you can get all these forms in EECP, um, our program guidelines and then our customer agreement form. So the program guidelines are an outline of the procedures and qualifications for Austin Energy rebates. Basically, we wanna show what the eligible uh, eligibility for funding is, um, what the contractor obligations are, what our installation requirements and the required documentation. For the CAF, it's, it's for the customer, the customer will sign this to see that they know, um, you know, they understand what's going to happen within this um, uh, for this project, right? And so the scope is basically contractor information, customer information, solar project information, and Austin Energy rebate information. So, like I said earlier, these are in EECP. Um, you can also find them on our website. Um, if you want, we can also send them to you if you email Solera, but they are readily available. Um, all right, so the guidelines. Um, basically, um, participating solar contractors are required to release customers from their contractual ob obligations with uh, upon request without penalty any time prior to the issue of the letter of LOI um, or the confirmation letter. So if it is a commercial project, we will issue an LOI. If it's a residential, it's called a confirmation letter. So important to distinguish that there. Um, subcontractors are permitted, so you can use a subcontractor, but the participating solar contractor must be the one to hold the permit um, or uh, hold the contract with the customer, pull the application permits with City of Austin DSD. So pull the permit, also sign the COF. Um, and then a big one here, guys, the system must be cited in a location where a minimum um, of 75% TSRF. So um, that's a non-negotiable. We do want it to be 75. Um, okay, so those are some questions there um, for the CAF. So um, you'll see this is a snippet of the residential CAF. There's those lines there. We want them to be initialed, um, and that's going to be initialed by the customer. Um, like we said earlier, subcontractors are allowed, but please put that in the form here. Um, uh, for residential, customers are um, required to take the solar ed exam before signing it. So if they took the solar ed exam, you know, today, 919, then uh, the CAF should be signed afterwards. Um, and so if it's signed 918, that that's a that is a conflict. So um, just make sure that you're looking at the dates on that one. Um, if the estimated system production is more than 110, that's okay. We just want to know what's going on there. So if like they put in a pool or there's an EV, um, just write that in there in the oversized waiver form um, section. Um, and that way we see that there. Um, last thing, indicate if batteries are included in the total system cost. All right. Um, okay, so this is an example of the PBI um, customer agreement form. And um, same thing here. If there's a primary contractor, they are going to sign it. Um, there is a section if you want to put in a sub. Um, and then uh, down below, you'll see there's applicant, primary contractor, and then the solar installer. So the solar installer would be there um, if you are using a contractor. Um, also, so everyone knows, the KWAC equals 0.83 times the DC size. Um, that's how we calculate it here. And then the in incentive amount here has to match EECP. Um, so it's that total incentive not to exceed. Um, basically, we're not trying to promise um, a higher value um, to our customers than what it is in EECP. EECP is a formula. And so um, when you're pulling that stuff into, um, or you're starting your EECP journey, then um, you will see EECP calculates that, use that number to help you fill out this form. All right, okay, questions. Let's see what's, what's up with the chat, okay. Um, 
the ECP. Okay, so we did talk about this steps in ECP. We do have um, detailed steps on how to for application steps. So I'll hold off on that question. Um, and then, yes, we will email this presentation to you all at the end of the presentation. Cool. Um, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, I'll go. All right, here we go. Meat and potatoes. How to process enrollments using EECP. So, all right, so I've been saying EECP a lot. I'll let you know it's called Energy Efficiency Collaboration Platform, EACP. Um, so the best thing about um, the best like practices for this is to make sure that you have access um, with a resource account. Um, the next, next best thing is to log um, have one login per person. Please don't share accounts. That's um, it's that's kind of like really difficult for us to understand. Um, so worst practice sharing accounts. Best practice resource account. Okay. Um, and so the most common issues um, we see are expired insurance, password changes, and account activity after 30 days. So if you have any of those issues, um, there's an email here, Austin Energy ESS Contractor at austinenergy.com. Those, um, that team is able to help you with those things. Um, for insurance expiration, you will need to update your insurance before we get, we can get you into um, the platform again. And then um, also password and account inactivities. Um, again, email that address and they will get you going. So um, I did mention this earlier before, but um, there is a publications section when you first log into EECP and there are information here. So there's a step-by-step -step guide um, and there is all of the information, the CAFs for each program, the um, guidelines for each program, a lot of information there. If you're looking for documents, it's most likely going to be there. Um, again, if not, it will also be on our website. So um, lots of resources for you all there. Okay, so day in the life residential solar rebate program. So for residential, your customer will need to take the, the solar education training course. Um, that's before the CAF is signed. Um, once you get the CAF signed, then um, you will receive a customer um, a confirmation letter, and that gives you 120 days to complete the installation. For new builds, we do give you 365 days. Um, then you'll get your get to install. After installation, then you will receive the one or your customer will receive a one time check, $2,500. Um, please remember that um, funding is not. Gonna, we we cannot give you any funds if you install prior to getting the solar confirmation letter. So that's a big one here. We're not able to promise anything if it's installed before then. Um, awesome. All right, so that's residential. Um, but how does it look in EECP? Well, um, in EECP, we have these things called workflows. Um, and so the application step is that first part where you're going to um, submit the majority of your forms. You'll also type in the solar quiz number that you're going to get from your customer, um, the CAF, the layout, um, and then you'll enter information into the measures page. Um, make sure that you check out those warnings and we'll go deeper into the warnings in some more slides. But after uh, um, application, you'll get into pre-inspection. This is a you know second check on our side where we're reviewing everything to make sure it's all good to go. After that, that's when you'll receive your solar confirmation letter. And that's um, uh, basically our commitment. Um, after, again, good to install. Um, if you're a new build, that's where you're entering in your account number and the meter number. Um, once you're in there, um, final orders in the final invoice needs to be signed by the applicant um, and a warranty. Um, after that, please request the inspection through the website. This is outside of EECP. It's on our website, austinenergy.com slash solar inspections. Um, and uh, once you request it through the form, then uh, we'll be able to see it and schedule it out. Um, after it has passed, your application will move into post inspection. And again, that's just verifying all the good stuff. Um, QA will be finalizing the documentation. So um, if there's any issues, there will be a bit of a back and forth with the QA corrections. If we ask you for um, 
you know, uh, the invoice wasn't signed. We'll we'll ask you to send over a signed one. Things like that. That's where that QA correction steps go in. Um, and then after that, initiate payment. And um, it does take about two to four weeks for our payment people to send out uh, the check. So just keep that in mind. But um, yes, after corrections, your um, initiate payment will commence. And that's two to four weeks. All right, so for commercial solar incentives, um, similar to residential, um, you're going to have a customer agreement form. Um, then we'll have an encumbrance. Um, so we'll get your initial forms and encumber it saying that this is like a hold for those funds, barring getting the rest of the information. So um, once we get the contract and the approved DGPA, then we'll go through um, uh, and if it is a large, um, if the incentive is over 74K per year, then we will need city council approval. Um, if it isn't, then we can move on to giving the letter of intent to fund. So that's 365 days uh, for the install to be complete. Um, and then after that, then um, you'll, you'll go through the final steps, final documentation, and then PBI will be on your customer's bill. All right. So commercial workflow step. Um, same same workflow steps, um, but for commercial, you'll go for application, and um, this is where you'll get your encumbrance letter. For RCA, um, again, this is only for projects above 74. We will need to get um, approval, and this can take up to two months, so um, please just make sure to put that into your timelines. Um, after that, we'll get a pre-inspection. That's where you get letter of intent. In this section, we're just making sure that all of the forms are all good to go. Um, once we're in installation, installation is the contractor's step, and that's where we get the final invoice. Um, and then you are able to request an inspection. So same as for residential, inspections are requested through the website and not through the ECP. Then we'll do our post inspection, a QA review with the correction loop if we need it, and then um, an issue payment. So you will still you will start seeing the PBI on the bill. Um, all right. So uh, mentioned the um, if your project has an incentive that is over seventy four k per year, it will need to go through RCA schedules. So this is um, our last RCA for the next um, round, and so the due date to submit your DGPA and contract is the 22nd of October. So if you're able to submit all of those forms and they look good and we are able to like pass it, then the next council meeting will be 21 November. So there's like a whole month in between if you guys see that. So we do really want you to um, make sure that you're looking at those documents. Um, these um, this calendar is set by council, so we don't have too much control over that. Um, and then also just in terms of our program capacity. So the CBI tier is at 97%. It's pretty much, uh, it's high over there, um, but we do have PBI tier two at 16%. There's some capacity there. All right, going on, how to proceed, uh, process residential enrollments. Okay, so this is the moment we've been waiting for, the step-by-step -step guide. Let's get into it. All right, so when you first get into EECP, um, and you start a new application for residential, it's going to look like this. Um, your reference number is going to be that solar education confirmation letter that your um, your customer gave you. Put that right here. Um, then you'll go through construction type. If there's energy storage, um, if you're adding to an existing system, and then the account number. If it is a new build, there is um, a way to go through with this. Um, if and we um, we have a separate presentation on that, um, but if it's not a new build, you would just put the account number there. All right, okay. So the applicant and the account holder might be different. Um, so the person that's applying for the rebate needs to be either the account holder or listed on the TCAD. Um, so we'll use TCAD to verify. Um, developers of new build projects can be applicants, um, but they need to have a W-9. Um, and then for Residential, the mailing address is where the check is going to be delivered. So that's super important. Um, 
making sure that that mailing address, if it's the same, like there's just a box and you're good. But if it's different, please just like do a double check because that's that's where the check is going for um, those uh, residential projects. OK, um, applicant information page. All right. So again, the payee may be one of the following. It's got to be an Austin Energy account holder, Austin Energy authorized user, a TCAD verified property owner, or a developer, again, for new builds with that W9. Um, please make sure that you're saving before you're proceeding to the knock documents. Um, it will give you a warning, but um, it's just always a good reminder to be saving. Um, it is also a pro tip to make sure that you have all the signatures and the names on the documents be consistent to match TCAD if necessary. Um, we definitely want to make sure that, especially for commercial projects, the same people are signing the same things. Um, that is something that we do look for. Okay, so the documents that you have to upload will be in the documents page. Um, what we're looking for are CAFs, layouts, if for any reason a shade analysis, um, if also there's like some extension requests, put them there. Um, just a note that the documents you upload can't be deleted. So um, if you upload a form that's not signed and then you upload another one that is signed, um, that's OK, but the other one won't be deleted. Um, so we do have a comment section. Uh, please utilize it if you feel it is necessary. Um, but yes, if you upload something, it's not going to be able to be deleted. All right. OK, so that was EECP. This is one of the documents that we do require, and it's a layout. Um, when we do review the layouts, some of the things that we do look for are um, the details. So make sure that you have details, number of modules, inverters, all of those things, azimuth um, and pitch. We do um, require that it is stamped NAPSEP certification. Um, we want to see the customer name and the installation address. So customer name, make sure that it's matching um, the EECP. So if it's like John Doe in EECP, let's have John Doe be on the layout. Um, and then customer or company name, that's you. Um, again, subcontractors may be used for installation, but the primary contractor has to be the one holding the contract. So please make sure you're on this layout. Um, all right. Okay. Application measures page. So this is where we want to make sure that the layout and um, what's in the measures page matches. Um, to edit this page, just click on the white space and then the um, it will be editable. So click on the white space. And what you're putting in is the total cost, that's solar and batteries, if your project has batteries. Um, when you add the um, orientation, it's helpful if you group the arrays with simil similar tilt and azimuth. So um, if they're all have um, 20 or 206 plus um, the tilt angle is 19, group those together. Um, it's easier for us to check out. Um, just a tip that um, there's only five, or we're only able to put five orientations into our system. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then you will also enter the contractor estimated annual generation and the customer annual energy consumption. Um, once you're done, you'll click process. Okay, so I uh, talked about it earlier before, but there are warnings within EECP. Um, here's a couple of them here. Um, if you uh, go through them, just click on uh, cancel and it'll take you right back to the page so that you can edit those fields. Please read them. We did take some care to uh, make sure that they were concise and complete. So um, they do have a lot of information. If you do see those warnings, just take a quick second and read through them. All right. Um, a couple things too. This is one that we see the dollar per system watt is over five dollars. You can continue to go and say okay, but um, please just make sure that you're reading through. And guys, I do apologize. I am having construction at my house. <laughs> um, all right. So the correction process. Sometimes we will see that oh, there's something that needs to be updated. So you need to um, uh, go and back and do it. The way that we do it is by putting it into application incomplete. Once you see application incomplete, then you will have um, uh, you will get an automated email, which means that you know we'll have notes in there showing you what you need to change. 
Um, once you have changed it, please change it to requested updates complete. Um, and that way we know that it's ready. An automated email will be sent it to us, solar at austinary.com, giving us a um, note to check on your application. Um, all right, so if there's a correction loop, we do have some ways of, auto of uh, monitoring that. Okay, once you're done, um, then you'll have application successful um, by receiving the confirmation letter or the LOI. And it looks something like this. Um, yes. Um, all right. So, yeah, if you, um, this is the confirmation letter, an example of residential, it looks something like this. Once you get this one, you're good to install. Um, okay, questions. Can you please email the presentation? Yes, we will send out the slides um, at the end of the thing of this pr presentation. Um, uh, I will send the group. There you go. There's the sign in form. And then, um, yes, we will also have these on our YouTube. Um, form is in there. Don't see any hands. All right. Go again. All right. Solar rebate. Compliance. This is um, going to hand us off to Megan. Good morning. Thanks, everybody. Um, first, can you hear me, Athena? Yep, we can hear you. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, talk about program compliance. So, what to do and what not to do on sales proposals and regarding customer signatures. Um, so, please keep in mind anytime you guys submit a form that has been updated after the fact, we will see it and it gets awkward, so please don't do it. Um, that said, just looking at these a little bit more specifically, so what you do wanna do is calculate your payback using the value of solar credit. There should be absolutely nothing about net metering in there, so please do not add that as part of your proposals to customers in Austin Energy Territory. Um, please keep in mind that the value of solar is subject to change with the utility rate evaluation. And those are evaluated on a three year basis. Um, so we, the next one will be evaluated, I believe, in 2026. Um, so just keep that in mind. Please also do encourage customers to seek legal or seek, seek tax advice on the eligibility of the ITC. Um, don't guarantee it and make sure that you're not building into your proposals discounts that actually have to be added back later. Just keep that in mind. Um, Customer signatures, do get handwritten signatures or use DocuSign or verifiable electronic signatures. Um, and then of course, if we ask for new signatures, please do get a new signature if there are changes on the document after signing. That's just sort of contracts 101, but keep it in mind. Um, and again, we'll we'll note it if it is something that's signed um, before the changes have been made to the doc. So please don't do that. All right, again, the opposite of that is don't calculate the payback using net metering use the language guaranteeing VOS. Again, don't include discounts and incentives in your eligibility costs um, or guarantee the tax credit. Don't backdate forms is another thing we catch a lot of times um, and we will call it out, so please don't do that. Or have customers sign documents before you fill out the information. Um, I know this can be a little bit easier sometimes, but it, it is something that we wanna make sure customers are aware of. That's the entire purpose of these customer agreement forms. So please make sure that you have all of that info in there before customers sign. All right, I think we've done this one justice. Next slide, please. All right, shade analyses. Okay, guys, so your shade analysis should have a layout that displays where measurement was taken, um, can be drone or flight path, and which identifies any object emitted from the report. Um, so please do note those things. Tilts and azimuths should match the EECP measures. If they don't, you can go back to Athena's um, guidelines on how to make those measures updated and make sure that gets resubmitted correctly. Um, it should also have shade access and TSRF measurements at each location. And again, that minimum TSRF needs to be 75 for the whole system. Um, total average TSRF needs to be included. And then the kilowatt hour production of the system is also, also should be present on that shade analysis. Um, to avoid warnings, just again, make sure your total solar resource fraction rate is above 75%. And Please do provide those shade analyses within 10 business days if we request one. Um, we just like to make sure that those are timely and that you guys are, are moving forward on those. All right. Any questions on compliance? 
And I see, Dave, your question about can you include guidelines for new construction? Um, I'm going to let Athena address that within the application steps. Um, but if you have any compliance questions, feel free to add them in the chat. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to you, Athena. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. Yes, so um, you can find the um, PowerPoint with um, helpful tips on new builds in the publications in EECP under publications, but we can also send them out with this um, presentation at the end of the meeting. So if you guys ever need any resources, um, just let us know. Um, we do try to post them, but we're they're ready and available. Um, OK. Questions, how to process enrollments installation phase. So if you guys recall, installation is the um, contractor. It's on the contractor to fill out this step. Um, and it looks similar to the measures tab. So again, if you want to click on the white space, that will activate the measures in there. If anything changes, this is your last chance to update the measures. So please go ahead and go in there. Um, if, if for any reason something's going on, you can always contact us, but you should be able to have access to this. And again, it's your last chance to update the measures. So um, you added more panels, put it on in there. It's all good. Um, as long as we have the information there, that's what we're looking for. Um, you will also need to upload an invoice. So what are we looking on for, for these invoices? So we want to have the company name. Um, please make sure that it's consistent with uh, EECP on the CAF um, and with the customer um, and then the, uh, sorry, the customer name and installation address, same deal, make sure it's good with EECP. Um, it must match the application and the CAF. We do also want a signature. Um, make sure that it is the same person who signed the CAF. We're, we're, we're looking to make sure that they're the same there. Um, so after, um, the date should be after installation is complete. So make sure, again, you're looking at those dates. You're looking at the dates in EECP. That's what we're doing. So we're hoping you're doing that too. Um, and then equipment description. So make, model, quantity, all of that stuff should be listed in there as well as the total price. We're also looking for the warranty. It's a 10 year equipment and workmanship warranty. We're looking for all of these things here. Um, I know it's a lot, so we will send you the slides, um, but that's what we're looking for here. Okay, so um, how to request an inspection and process EECP enrollments. Okay, back to you, Megan. Awesome, thanks, Athena. So requesting inspections. Um, I think everybody on this chat has probably seen this a time or two, but if not, we'll just go through a couple pieces here. So please do continue to use the solar inspection request form. We are getting very close to getting to allowing you guys to request those inspections from the A, B, and C portal, similar to the way that you do it for other types of inspections, but we're still not quite there yet. Um, and just keep in mind that we will continue to use this form for a little while, even after that functionality is launched. Um, so just keep a, keep in mind, mind out, or keep an eye out for that update um, to follow here soon. And in the meantime, please do continue to use the solar inspection request form. Um, just keep in mind a couple of things on this form. So the fields will populate or um, display based upon what you select. So if you are doing a final solar inspection, there are conditionally mandatory fields that will pop up. Uh, please fill all of those out and submit that form. Please also include your contact number as well as the contact name of the person for that inspection so that our contractors, or sorry, our inspectors know who to call on the day of the inspection to make sure that you guys are going to be there. Once you submit the form, we will receive it um, as soon as it's submitted, it comes right into our, our queue. Um, and then you guys should receive emails as soon as it gets sent, as soon as we schedule the inspection, um, once that inspection passes or fails, and then once your PV meter is installed. If for some reason, when you submit the form, you do not see a confirmation that the form was submitted, it's very possible that you just entered the email address in wrong. So please do send us an email just to confirm, and then we can get that updated so you can get all the rest of those uh, notifications as well. And then this one's pretty obvious, but if AE is not the service provider, request that inspection through Austin Build and Connect. That's not going to come through us if, if AE is not the uh, is not the utility. All righty, next slide, please. OK, so what when you're requesting a submission uh, or sorry, an inspection, so a couple of submission errors to keep an eye out for. 
Um, again, one of the things that we know a lot of times is that the inspection request type is wrong. So the difference again here between a pre-wire and a refin is capacity. If you have capacity, if in other words, you're adding solar or batteries or some type of DG um, capacity, then you are gonna want to get a aux permit and just request the refin to view any you know, walls, wires, floorboards, anything that's gonna be covering up that conduit. Um, if, however, you just wanna get a house ready for solar, but you don't actually have a solar contract or the, the customer is not going solar yet, that is a pre-wire. That's the only time you would use that pre-wire um, auxiliary permit type, and then that pre-wire inspection as well to follow. And again, I'll just note here, please, please do add your phone numbers every single time. Um, it's just easier when we have it all in the same place. So that contact name and phone number should be listed there. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, everybody. So I've updated these a little bit so you can see the new portal that was just launched recently. Um, and I did want to point to a couple of things that are, I think, pretty helpful when you're looking at permitting. Um, so just a quick note here, and, and I talked to a couple of contractors about this, but just so everybody's aware, every single time you submit an inspection request, the very first thing we're going to do is look at that address to see what permits are open and outstanding for that address. If there is any type of electrical work um, that is not related to the solar, it is likely that we will have to pause that sol final solar inspection um, until that electrical work is completed. So if you have an open repair or upgrade permit on that address, we will have to wait to do the final solar inspection until those are in final status. And just keep in mind, it doesn't even have to be assigned to you. If another electrical contractor has opened up an upgrade or repair permit and is completing that work, they need to finish that work before we can schedule that final solar inspection. And again, we're gonna look at this every single time you guys submit an inspection request. So it's it's something you can build out into your processes, then even better, you'll, you'll save us a couple extra steps. <clears throat> that said, you can use that exact same link that you were using before for the new A, B, and C portal. It should take you right to the new page. Um, and just keep in mind, the public search feature looks a little bit different, but you still can get to it if you go to the top of that page and click public search and then navigate to where you're looking at this box. Um, and you can either search by permit numbers these days or by addresses um, and key details there. One other thing to note here, what is an open permit? So anything that is in incomplete, pending or active status is technically open. Anything that's not in final, withdrawn, or canceled is open. So keep those statuses in mind because if you, again, have any open or pending or even incomplete repair permits, those need to be closed before that aux permit can be finaled. All right, and then again, just one more quick note here, that open da data portal is really helpful. Um, it makes it to where you don't have to sort of chunk out your addresses and search by the dates. The open data portal is, instead will show you everything that's open for that address. Um, currently. So it's it's another really helpful tool on the new portal that you guys can use to kind of check these things out ahead of time. All righty, next slide, please. Okay, uh, one thing in ECP you're going to want to do before requesting that inspection is confirming the installation step is closed. And Athena just went through a lot of these parameters. However, the couple of things that you'll want to note here are making sure that that actual visit date corresponds with the day that you're processing the application. So keep that in mind. Um, make sure you select work complete, answer anything else again, as, as she just went through in the inspection step, and then hit process. Um, if for some reason you have an issue processing it, do reach out to the solar add-in box. You know, we're, we're there to help you. Um, but hopefully you should be able to submit this and then it'll move into that post installation, uh, or sorry, post inspection step. All righty, next slide, please. Okay. When are engineer stamped plan sets needed? So when you're in the city, if you're going to have tilted panels that are not flush with the roof or panels that extend past the roof line, you're going to need that engineered stamp plan set. Or if anything is on the downtown network, same thing there. Um, if you're inside city limits or inside limited purpose or the ETJ, however, if you're going to do a ground mount or attach a new structure, um, solar roof tiles or batteries, anything over 500 kWAC, for any commercial DG installations or utility side interconnections. So just keep that in mind. Engineered plant, stamp plan sets needed in those cases. Um, and we will not be able to complete the, the inspection if we do not see that. All righty, next slide, please. Okay, 
And I believe I'm going to turn it over to Ruby on who to contact. I do just see another question on sending out the recording of the call along with this presentation. So I will answer yes. Again, we will be sending out the slides and you can always access these on YouTube after the fact. So thank you. Yep, so this is a list of some helpful links. Um, like Athena and Megan have stated, this will be uploaded, sent to all of you, so you can access these links, um, you know, if you need uh, to use them as a reference. Um, something to point out, there's a link to solar inspections, like Athena was saying, that's not in our um, EECP portal. So make sure that you're, um, you know, scheduling those inspections through that link. And then something to point out too, um, there is a new email for meter variances. So make sure that y'all are referencing that um, email um, if you do need to contact someone for meter variance requests. And then, yeah, um, if you need any help with your EECP portal um, or if you wanted to follow up on the status of a rebate application, just make sure to email solar at austinenergy.com. And yeah, we'll make sure to um, you know answer your questions. Awesome, thank you, Ruby, and thanks everyone. Um, yes, so um, the recordings are too large to send in an email, but they are on YouTube. It does take our web team a little bit of time to um, uh, upload it, so please be patient. It takes about a week, um, but they are on the website and um, are on YouTube, and we will send the slides out the clickable links or the links are clickable um so with that i'm not seeing anything else in the chat um if you would like to raise your hand for any questions we can unmute you um i will hang out for a little bit in the chat but if they're all good um we'll see you the next time um how do you know that your company was approved for a trade ally with austin energy great so um, once you have completed all of the forms and have, um, uh, oh, I'll put the form in the chat real quick. Yes, thank you all. Um, so sorry, going back to your question about if you are a trade ally. So you will be able to find yourself in the participating contractors on our website, austinenergy.com. Um, and you can, uh, if you're not on that website, Again, our web team does take, they they have about a week. So if you're not on there, um, please be patient. Um, but you have to have made sure that you have um, attended the meetings. All of your forms are up to date. And if they're not up to date, we'll email you all. So um, make sure that Solar at Austin Energy is a safe sender. Um, and we'll be in touch for sure. Um, yes, yeah, so I do see some people putting their names in the chat. We are getting... Um, our attendance from the form. So please fill out the form or you're not going to get attendance credit. So please make sure to do the form. Awesome. Okay, so let's see. Log in for those. Um, cool. All right. That's the only other question. Which form? Oh, um, so the link in the chat, and I'll send it one more time. That is the um, if you click on the link, it'll take you to a form. Um, so See, go on the link. This is what it looks like. So, your name, your company name. Um, yes, so this is the form. If you click on the link that I've dropped in the chat, that's there you go. We do want some information. Also, if you guys are looking at future topics, we do gather this information. Um, we are trying to create more topics that are helpful for you all. Um, so with that, yes, have a great day, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I'll hang out until for another minute or so if people have more questions.